Hey, hey, all right. So this PowerPoint is all about how bacteria grow and their their growth patterns. And so um, the first the first set of slides deals with what bacteria need in order to survive. Well, they need physical requirements, and then we'll do chemical requirements. Bacteria need si temperature. They need a certain temperature, just like you and I do. Um, you know, we can live in 100 degree weather, and we can live in, well, I can live in 30 degree weather, but anything outside of 30 to 100, I'm going to die. At 20, I'm just kidding, but bacteria are that way. Anything outside of their normal temperature, you know, they have a range, but anything outside of their range, they would die. And so a psychrophil is a type of bacteria that they really like to live in the cold. And I'm not talking about refrigerator cold. I'm talking about tundra cold. Really, really, really cold, like the snow. Mesophils, like room temperature. Thermophils would live in warm places, like the sea vents at the bottom of the ocean or, you know, somewhere really warm. Most bacteria have a range of about 30 degrees. So they can live at, you know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, that's their optimum. Optimum is the best. You know, but they can live at 85 and they can live at uh, 55. And anything outside of that, they're going to die. Most pathogens grow well at human body temperature, unfortunately. You know, bacteria like warm, moist places, right? So most bacteria like warm, moist places. And so I'm going to come back to that picture in a second. But a psychotroph is an organism that grows best at refrigerated temperatures. And so that's not going to be most, uh, if you look right here. No. I'm going to go out of order a little bit. Psychotrophs grow best at refrigerated temperatures. And so on that first slide, um, we talked about a psychrophil. That's colder than a refrigerator. Psychotroph means refrigerate. They feed at a refrigerated temperature. Uh, and Listeria monocytogens is an example. It's an organism. Anything like, it's what's going to, um, you've probably heard of Listeria spoiling sandwich meat. Turkey, uh, hot dogs, you know, bologna and such like that. And so, um, that's a psychotroph. And the reason we put stuff in the refrigerator is it slows down the growth. Like your milk is still going to spoil in the refrigerator, but it's going to take longer, right? On the counter, it's going to spoil in an hour. In the refrigerator, it's going to spoil in two weeks, something like that. Okay, let's take it back to this picture. And so this is just showing you that Psychrophils like this temperature, you know, negative 10 to 20 degrees, where psychotrophs can grow from 0 to 30. And so you don't have to know those numbers, but I do want you to see that psychotrophs uh, like it warmer. Okay, and then back to this slide. All bacteria have a maximum that they can grow at, a minimum that they can grow at, and uh, an optimum. And so optimum is going to be best. And so if you look right here, and you got zero degrees Celsius, that's freezing, and 100 degrees Celsius, that's boiling. And let's say a bacteria grows best, we said 35 to 37, so we'll go with uh, 30 to make the math easy. But, well, I guess, okay, we'll make it right. 30, we'll go with 35. Okay, so optimum is 35 degrees for this particular bacteria we're going over. 35 degrees is optimum, and so it can grow, it can grow all the way, it can grow at 50 degrees, at 51 degrees, that's too warm, it dies. And it can grow at 20 degrees. But at 19 degrees, that's too cold, it dies. So its range is, and I just use those numbers because it said a 30 degree range, right? Its range is from 20 to 50. 35 is the best. That's where that bacteria can really 
culture and grow best. The maximum would be 50, and the minimum would be 30. So no organism could ever grow above its maximum or grow below its minimum, right? But optimum is the best. Okay, so we said temperature. Bacteria have to have a certain pH. And before we start there, let's go over what pH is. pH is a scale from 0 to 14. And base is, um, neutral is 7. 7 to 14 is a base. And 7, well, anything less than 7, anything greater than 7 is a base. Anything less than 7 to 0 is an acid. And it's all about the hydrogen molecules. So the uh, acids are releasing lots of hydrogens and bases are releasing lots of hydroxides. And so, uh, you know, ammonia is a base and lemon juice is an acid. And milk is like a 6.5 or something like that. Uh, Coke is like a 4. Man, wonder why it's bad for your teeth. Okay, so that's what a pH scale is, is the uh, amount or the concentration of hydrogens. Okay, so bacteria have to have a certain pH. Um, blood, pH, your blood, human blood is 7.4. So most bacteria grow best right about your blood. Isn't that nice? But most bacteria grow best from 6.5 to 7.5. Very few grow good in acidic environments. Like your pickles, they're not going to go bad. Bacteria don't want to live in that vinegar. No, no. Um, acetophils are bacteria that like ac acidity. So where we said thermophils like temperature, acetophils like acid. Uh, molds and yeast have a broader range. So like where bacteria only has a one range, um, molds can grow at more acidic and more basic. And optimum is, you know, five to six. So where, if you look at their scale, bacteria grow best here and have a small range. Molds maybe grow best. We'll go with a different color. So molds would be down here, five to six. Uh, so they... Um, have a broader range and lower optimum, so they can have a they can grow at higher and lower pHs, but um, optimum is more acidic. Okay, so we already said that bacteria have to have a certain temperature and a certain pH. They also have to have a certain amount of water. So, osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure is water, and, and bacteria are 80 to 90% water, just like our bodies. And uh, they, they require water to survive. High osmotic pressure environments draw water from the cell. And so think about how they take turkeys and, and put Cajun seasoning on it, uh, or even brown sugar or, or any kind of salt. Well, what that's doing is it's drawing the water out of the bacteria, so the bacteria couldn't survive in the turkey or the ham. Um, they started doing that with just salt and sugar, and then I guess since it tasted good, they started using all different kinds uh, of seasonings. And so salt and sugar as preservatives are examples. And halophile is a bacteria that tolerates high salt concentration, and so where acetophils like acid and thermophils like really cold temperature, halophils like um, salty concentrations. And so think about what would spoil a trout, like a freshwater trout that had been packed in salt. Um, what would, like after they catch the trout, they'll pack it in a salt to preserve it until it gets to the grocery store or the restaurant. And so a halophil would be what spoiled that. And you know water is going to go towards the salt instead, instead of the organism. Okay, so we talked about the physical requirements. They were temperature, pH, and water. Now for the chemical requirements. We have carbon, water, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. Okay, so carbon, uh, 
if you took out the water in a bacteria, over half of what's left, so the dry weight, um, is carbon. And the same thing with you, of your dry weight, your elements, uh, over half of you is, is carbon. Um, water, again, got to be 80 to 90 percent. Nitrogen, you've heard in DNA, like where A pairs with T and C pairs with G, those are nitrogen bases in DNA. So, small amounts of nucleic acid, that's DNA, and protein. you got to have nitrogen in your protein. Sulfur, going to be in proteins. And then phosphorus is in DNA. And then, of course, the phospholipids, they make up the cell. Okay, so when I learned this, this may or may not help you, but when I learned this, I learned Chinox. And that's a pretty standard acronym. This is all the elements that living organisms have to have. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And uh, it's pronounced chinox, I guess a way to remember it. But on your particular PowerPoint, the hydrogen, the hydrogen and the oxygen are put together for water. So carbon, water, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus are the elements that all living organisms have to have. And those are your chemical requirements. Oxygen requirements. Some bacteria, like obligate aerobes, love oxygen, must have it, can't survive without it. Like us, we have to have oxygen in order to survive. And then some hate oxygen. Hate, hate, hate oxygen. And so some bacteria require it. Some bacteria would die in the presence of oxygen. Some bacteria, and I'm skipping around, some bacteria like oxygen in small amounts. So micro, micro air fills like oxygen in small amounts. Uh, these last two I left are the hardest ones, and so they're the ones that people get confused about. Faculative anaerobes would prefer to have oxygen. They use oxygen, they prefer to have it, but they, um, they can survive without it. And so um, they use it, but they can survive without it. Uh, e. coli in your intestines is an example of that. Um, so again, they want to have oxygen. They will like oxygen, but if they were removed from an oxygen environment, they could survive. Air tolerant, don't use it, don't need it, don't want it, but doesn't bother them. Air tolerant, that's how we feel about uh, nitrogen gas. 78% of what you're breathing in is nitrogen gas, and you're breathing it out. It doesn't matter. It's not helping you. It's not hurting you. You're just breathing in nitrogen and breathing out nitrogen. So that's how that's how we feel about nitrogen. That's how they feel about oxygen. So they don't need it. They don't use it, but it doesn't bother them either. So faculative, just remember, they, they want it. They prefer it. Air tolerant, it doesn't matter. And so um, when I was taking my grad classes, I remember I had to, uh, I wrote a paper on clostridium and studied it. And clostridium, you know, that's what causes tetanus. And on your bonus assignment, it asks for three ways that we talked about clostridium. And so this is the third one. Clostridium, an endospore former, an exotoxin, and now it's an obligate anaerobe. So that's the answer to that question. Ask, you know, where do we talk about clostridium three times? But, um, so if you think about it, clostridium, you know, grows on metal. Well, metal's outside, and so is oxygen. And so uh, how could, just think about it for a second, how could clostridium grow on a rusty nail outside if it hates oxygen? How could it survive? And so uh, maybe you're thinking, hopefully the answer you're figuring out is in its endospore form. And so when clostridium is outside in the presence of oxygen, it can fold into its endospore form. It can sporulate so that it's not killed by the oxygen. Because if you'll remember, uh, endospores help bacteria survive extreme conditions. And so for clostridium, an extreme condition would be in the presence of oxygen. And so this next picture just shows you uh, where the organisms would be. And so the obligate aerobe, you can tell, is at the top because it needs oxygen. Uh, the obligate 
anaerobe is growing at the bottom. Just think about this like a test tube with the oxygen up. Like the oxygen, it's open, so it's uh, oxygen is available at the top. Obligate anaerobe is at the very bottom because it's moving away from the oxygen. It doesn't want to be there. Micro air fields are not at the top, but closer to the middle. So there's a little bit of oxygen right there. Air tolerant, they grow anywhere. Not worried about the oxygen. And then faculative, it should show that they're mostly at the top, but there are a few at the bottom. So they're mostly at the top and then a few scattered throughout. Okay, organism generation time. Some bacteria could um, re reproduce in as little as 20 minutes. One E. coli makes two E. coli in 20 minutes. Some take longer, 10 to 14 days. And when I say generation time, I'm talking how long does it take for one bacteria to divide by binary fission and make two bacteria? Most one to three hours. And so most bacteria are going to be one to three hours, some as little as 20 minutes, some 10 to 14 days. And so there's a formula you can figure out how many bacteria are there. And so, um, and you don't have to memorize these numbers, but you do want to know the formula. The number of cells times 2n will tell you. And so uh, let's do E. coli. Let's practice a little bit with E. coli. So if E. coli generates or regenerates in 20 minutes, okay, so let's say um, 20 minutes. So how many... How many generations are there in an hour? Well, three in an hour, right? So, because there's 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes, that gives them the bacteria time to reproduce three times. So let's say you take a bite of some mayonnaise with some E. coli in it, and you, have, you get five bacteria in your mouth. And so you're gonna say five times two in one hour, that would be your answer. And now on your test, you're not going to have a calculator. So I can't ask you to do anything too hard. But um, to figure that out, it will be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, let's do one. We'll do one more with E. coli. Okay, so let's say you ingest five, uh, let's say 10 bacteria. How many bacteria are there after 6 hours? Okay, so you're going to do 6 times 2. In 6 hours, there would be 18 generation times, right? Because in six, there's 3 in 1 hour, so in 6 hours, there'd be 6 times 3, 18. Okay, and then the one on your bonus assignment, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it is staff. And so staff has a reproduction time of 30 minutes. And I, I want to say it starts out with six cells times two. And I'm not sure about the time. We're going to say maybe seven hours. And so there would be 14 generations in seven hours. And so uh, make sure if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Okay, so four phases of bacterial growth. The first one is, and I'm actually going to draw this instead. The first one, when, bacterial, when bacteria cells grow, they start out just barely growing. So little to no reproduction. And then they shoot up. And they start reprodu reproducing really fast. Metabolism's up. Um, and they're very sensitive to drugs right here, so very sensitive to antibiotics. Then they're going to go into their stationary phase where they even out. The, bet, the birth rate equals the death rate, so binary fission, one dies, binary fission, one dies. And then the death rate, so the cells start to die off, they get older, die of old age. And so right here there's little to no growth. Okay, and then right here they start to shoot up, and this is where there's lots of bacterial growth, and they're sensitive to adverse conditions. So they're sensitive to uh, whatever antibiotic you might be taking or 
uh, whatever kind of drug you've been given. And then here is where they've leveled off. And then, of course, did the, the death phase. And so I think I actually have, there we go. So you can see lag phase leveled off at the very beginning. And then log or exponential, stationary, and death phase. So little to no cell division, most reproduction and increase in numbers, most metabolic activity with log, and then um, stationary, cells dying, equal cells being, being produced, and then death phase, they're dying faster than they're going through binary fission. And so um, that's just the phases. And people always ask, is it easier to kill young bacteria or old bacteria, and it's easier to kill it faster. As soon as you get sick, if you'll take a um, antibiotic, then you won't be as sick. Uh, you won't ever get as sick, and so the antibiotic can kill the bacteria faster if you take it right off the bat. But if you wait, it's going to take more antibiotic and take longer for you to be healed that way. And all right, I hope that was helpful.